I'm back. I've escaped the planet Earth. I needed an escape. Maybe you need an escape. And you know what? My half hour show might be just that. First thing I want to do is show you a video that I made to go with the music recorded by Beaver and Krause of an album called All Good Men. It's an unusual treat. The cut is called Legend Days Are Over. Beaver and Krause recorded Elizabeth Wilson. In the post-production, they added a mood and the environmental sounds. What's interesting here, she was part of a tribe, and she was part of, I always get this name wrong, because I think of the French name, which is something like Ne Per Se. That's bad, my French. In English, it's called Nez Perce tribe. Anyhow, in any way, she was recorded. She was born in 1881. And uh, I think you'll enjoy this. Check it out. The way the medicine man went and got guiding spirit contact with animal or whatever it is, they kept on dancing every winter. They got strong and power came to them. They got strong and power came to them. 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 Everything was different. Clear air and wilderness and they could get in touch with animals like that. But I don't think they can now. Everything gone, noise and all. All right, legend days will be over. Humanity is coming soon. No more legend days. There will be no more. And they will be sad like I am, broken hearted over my last child, never to return again. Death takes her. And that's the way it's going to be. I wander along only in the higher mountains and the heads of the streams all the way through. I'm never down anywhere for its civilized country. I'm way up in the wilderness years to come people will lose the only child and they'll have the feeling just like i have said that's what and that that's why these days we are that way. sadness comes to us
My ship. Oh no, it's broken. I'm gonna have to fix it. Again. Oh, it does break down occasionally. For years it didn't fly. Now it flies. But I will fix it. Speaking of broken, there was a Bob Dylan song called Everything is Broken. And coincidentally, my good friend Jerry Wilder sent me in a video of him doing this song. He plays all the instruments. So while I roll that, I'm going to fix the ship. At least I'll attempt. Okay, Jerry, everything is broken. While you were watching that clip, I got my most sophisticated tool to fix the VivaFix. It was broken. 
and it's now fixed. What a great tool. I got it on Earth. This is my wonderful tool. It does all kinds of things. Tightens things, loosens things, and when you get frustrated, Hmm. Well, all that activity and I'm getting hungry. Are you getting hungry? Let's have an intermission. Let's see what we can do for food. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Back in spring of 2022, I traveled through East Hampton to Springs. It was a spring show for the East End Photography Group. And to talk about it, I got to meet my friend and a former bandmate, Jerry Gilliberti. So, with any further ado, let's run the clip. So, it is 2022. And this is the 34th annual East End Photographers Group show at Ashwalk Hall. And you and I are still here. That's an amazing thing. Yeah, and we're back at Ashwalk Hall, which is an amazing thing. <laughs> <at> <laughs> too. And have, the building is still here, it's still standing. And uh, we have another photography show, our annual show, and uh, we've got 17 photographers. 17 now? Yeah. Okay. And um, this is our first big show of the season. So this is technically still spring till the... Yeah, it's still spring. So We've got a couple more weeks before summer. summer. So it's still spring and springtime. Spring and springtime, yeah. Oh, okay, you know. And we're having a show where a couple years ago. We won't say why, but there was a reason why there wasn't a show one year. Mm, I guess it was probably the pandemic. Was that the... I didn't want to say the, I didn't want to say the word. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, this is my description of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, but we're not doing that right now. It looks like we're in better shape. Yeah. Keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. So I'm going to hand you the mic, mm -hmm. and you're going to go through and talk to me about what you got here. And okay. I'm going to be the guy behind that machine over there. All right. That we, we've done this kind of like before. Yes, yeah. we've done this so I'm, many times. I know this guy. Yeah, we met back in the 1800s. Yes. Here you go. Your okay. mic. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, the reason I put these in was because I was doing a cloud study, you know? And so I was looking through my images, and uh, this image is uh, from the desert area in the um, Death Valley. And uh, it's just a cloud study that I had was interested in. It was just a, a wide open desert with a sort of a mountain range. This is... Uh, a very popular spot in Death Valley called Zabreski Point. And uh, luckily on the day before we were leaving, there was a big uh, rainstorm coming into California and we got all these really cool clouds coming in. And uh, if, you look, if you look really close in there, you'll see tiny people like, lining up with their cameras up on the mountains. and. Uh, Hopefully I didn't get any in there, but it, there might be one. And everybody takes photographs of this area. Uh, and the last one I have in the show is from Gardner's Bay right out here. Uh, it's called Storm Clouds, and it's in Gardner's Bay. And where I live in Clearwater Beach, they have people come and look at the sunset, you know, every night. And one sunset, I was there, and the clouds were crazy looking. And I, originally, this was sort of uh, bluish and orange and red. I just made it into black and white. And so it looks, you know, it looks sort of 
ominous. Uh, so, so those are the three that I have in the show. We haven't really counted up how many were in the show yet, but there are 17 photographers. Um, this is the part where I walk back into the shop, yeah? yeah? <laughs> okay. Because I have these teams of photographers and videographers. It's amazing, all these photographers here. And now one is here to help me on the camera. Actually, that doesn't go up that way. My camera. And you got to know the camera. So I'm kidding about that. But the bottom line here is that this year the show was open earlier to the public. Yes, that's because we have the, the market. Uh, every Saturday there's a market out here, and mm -hmm. they sell different types of things. And uh, they open up at 10, so it gives us an, uh, an advantage. We have lots of people out there. They can come in, and we can start early, you know, 10 o'clock. So, oh, this is great, this is great. So it's not just headed for the bathroom and walk through my shots. It's now actually people that are early at the market get to see what's going on here, Yeah, which is a great idea. Yeah, and hopefully some of them will come back for our opening, which we have, you know, at five, and uh, have food and wine and all that kind of stuff. Okay, this is not to do with the show, but I want to put this in the edit. All right. Up Island, I'm known as a blues guy. Right. And I've been airing 1997 Blues 2000 with a certain guy. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, that was an experience, I have to say. Yeah, I know. And I we had to play with some old-time blues guys. That's I correct. Remember. That's correct. And so now I want to ask you about music. What's going on with the East Hampton scene in music, particularly with you? Okay, well, I'm playing, you know, with a band called Out East. Uh, www.outeastmusic.com and uh, it's a trio and we do 90% original music and uh, <laughs> and the rest of it is uh, a few covers things like that so we played the talk house we played you know, the clubhouse we played a lot of different locations here uh, the Masonic Temple uh, in Sag Harbor, which is by the Whaling Museum. Cool, I like and, that. And uh, a lot of different uh, outdoor things we did in town uh, at the uh, village. And so uh, we're keeping busy. Okay, now, on another side, you're, um, besides a photographer and a musician, a drummer, percussionist, I like percussionist better than drummer, yeah. but you also have various kinds of other skills in arts. Um, besides a photograph, I've seen you do little things you look into and... Oh yeah, I, I do some uh, photo uh, um, composite type things with, with metal and uh, transparencies and do little sculptures. Uh, and uh, actually I'm doing one of those for the box art uh, charity that's coming up in August, it's in town at, at, in uh, East Hampton, and basically what, what it is is they raise money uh, and everybody gets a cigar box, and you have to make some sort of art make, from it. And can you make they, a, band, a, a guitar out of it? Yeah, it's a cigar box. Would, but, yeah, yeah, that one you had in mind. It has to be art. Art, okay. Yeah, well, guitar can be art. Yeah. And then they uh, auction it all, all those off, and they get, take that money, and it goes to the uh, charity for the church. There. Is this an annual event? Annual event. So uh, I can repeat coming up this. Uh, August 27th, I think. Of 2022. Of so 2022. If, if we have this show coming up, we'll have to put a subtitle between us of the recent show that that's going to air, yeah. because that would be have to do okay. that. So the, I'm just saying, yeah. technical stuff, guys. So, yeah. well, I thank you for inviting me here. Well, it's always I, great I, to see you. you know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, we get to see each other like so much during the year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But that's how, that's how life goes. That's, being busy. that's show business. That is show business. <laughs> that is, you know. And the show looks really good this oh. year, you know. Thank you. All right, I'm going to try and snag a few other people. Try. Okay. You never know around here. Yeah. All well, right. I, I think I see one over there. Well, we'll get him. Okay. We'll get right. him, we'll get her, we'll get them all. Okay. All right. Thanks again. That's a wrap. Wrap. One of these. I got two of these mics now. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two.
The movie for today, the clip I want to show you, is a high-tech clip. The sound on the trailer ain't so high-tech, but the clip is a high-tech. We're going to take a voyage. This is the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Check it out. Here is the Columbia Picture star, Catherine Grant, as she appears in the seventh voyage of Sinbad. You know, a girl has to be awfully careful where she goes and what she does these days, because she can wind up in the most unexpected places. For instance, inside a magic lamp. Welcome, Princess Prissa. I want to tell you about one of the most unusual, most spectacular motion pictures ever made shot in Moorish Spain, truly an Arabian night setting for the most dazzling of all the Arabian night's adventures, the seventh voyage of Sinbad. In settings like these, the cameras have created breathless spectacles. Let me show you what happens when Sinbad, the most celebrated adventurer of all times, takes his most thrilling voyage. Here he is as he comes eye to eye with the Cyclops. see scenes from the seventh voyage of Sinbad, I keep wondering, how did they do it? How did they create the very creatures described in the tales of the Arabian Nights? They explained to me that it's done through a new movie-making process called Dynamation. But please don't ask me what it is. All I do is sit back and enjoy it. Let's sit back now and watch some more Dynamation magic. This time, you've seen a lot of Sinbad, played by a very handsome young actor named Kerwin Matthews, as dashing a swashbuckler as you've seen around since Douglas Fairbank Sr. He's strong enough to carry me with just one finger. Sinbad is stuck. I cannot move it. You must try, Princess. It's our only hope. But don't think I play all my scenes with Kerwin this way. Some of the time, I'm a real big girl. For another such kiss, I'd invent a whole continent. Oh, there's more, much more in the seventh voyage of Sydney. There are sights you never saw before, or even dreamed of. You have just seen a special preview of the new miracle process, Dynamation which will be introduced to the screen in Columbia Pictures, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, starring Kerwin Matthews and Catherine Grant, co-starring Richard Eyre as the genie of the magic lamp with Torin Thatcher. In Technicolor, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad is the eighth wonder of the screen. One of my old bandmates is Mike the Highlander O'Brien. He came over to visit me on my Earth residence, and we went into the yard of back, all right, the backyard, and we were jamming. And what did we do? Well, we created a song right on the spot.